Hey guys, Sandy here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I am playing with some fun Brutus Monroe products. Now I've pulled some shrink film. I also have the lovely Ladybugs stamp and dies here. So all of these beautiful images have dies for them. I'm also going to play with my aqua pigments. I've pulled out some cardstock and some pattern paper. So let's see what I can do. All right, guys. So I am using a stamp positioner tool and I have placed a sheet of shrink film in that stamp positioner tool. I'm taking all of the cute little flowers and bits and placing them down. And I'm just going through and picking out the ones that I want. So I know that these are going to be a lot smaller than what they show stamped. And it's actually kind of surprising how much smaller they get. What is beautiful about using a stamp positioner tool is that you can uh, re-stamp if they do not stamp all the way. So I go ahead, I use my Brutus Monroe detail ink, and then I'm going to go ahead and do it one more time, maybe even two, I don't know, but I get it dark. Now the, just two, okay. Now the little bits of uh, shrink plastic that I have stamped on, uh, it needs to dry a little bit because that ink is just kind of sitting on top of it. It's not going to really sink into the surface. It dries on the top of the surface as opposed to uh, this cardstock that I'm using over here where I'm going to use the ladybug uh, and such things over here. So I'm going to get all of my little pieces back on my stamp sheet. Now I would definitely recommend putting your tiny little stamps back on the stamp sheet where they belong uh, as soon as you're finished using them. Otherwise those little guys can get lost pretty easily. Now here is where you're going to be able to see that I place ink over top of the stamps multiple times uh, and every time I use that stamp positioner tool it gets darker and darker. So I have this nice deep dark raven inked uh, bugs over here, these ladybugs. Now I know that the top one um, or the one on the right is also a ladybug uh, but I did not I did not paint his wings with the aqua pigments red just like this one. I went ahead and did them blue and that is because I took creative license and did what I wanted. Now you don't always have to create things where they are the actual color. You can do whatever you want. You can have phantasmagorical bugs if you want to and that's what I got going on right here. I am using uh, this bluish aqua pigment right here and I am loving it. Don't even care that a ladybug's wings aren't ever really blue. I've never seen a blue ladybug's wings, right? Like I've seen yellowish ones, definitely bright red ones, kind of orangey ones, but never blue, but I love it. Um, I made sure that the top wing was darker and then the little under wings down here were lighter. And then I'm gonna go ahead and also paint in my florals. So the same thing with the ink, you guys. These aqua pigments are not going to sink into the shrink film. They're going to puddle up on the top. They're going to pool a little bit. Um, P-O-O-L, not P-U-L-L. -L. They're going to pool a little bit on the top of the shrink plastic. And um, they will eventually dry that is fine. Like you could also use different mediums to color in your shrink plastic, but I was already playing with my aqua pigments. So I figured I would make that happen. Um, I'm using green on green leaves. I'm using uh, some blues, some, just some pretty colorful uh, aqua pigments that I have going on here. I am going over them multiple times because the aqua pigments are pooling uh, in in like specific places on the shrink plastic and I kind of want the color to spread out. So even though the plastic is going to shrink, I don't want any spots of white where the color isn't going to show up. Um, while that dries, I go ahead and die cut out my little bugs here and then I go ahead and die cut out the shrink plastic. Um, so with this shrimp plastic, I'm just using a pokey tool and my heat tool. Now, is that crazy, crazy how much these guys shrink down? 
I mean a tremendous, tremendous amount. I'm not going to make you watch me fumble and shrink all of those guys down, but look how tiny they are. It's amazing. Um, I am going to cut a big shaker circle in the middle of this pattern paper right here. So I just used a uh, pattern, a circle pattern stencil to go ahead and cut out my circle. Um, I cut in the middle of the circle and now I am cutting around that pencil line. So I could have done any shape. I could have done a hand drawn floral shape because of the flowers on the background paper. Could have done a square. Um, but I just decided a circle would be the thing to do. It kind of looks like a porthole, um, and I'm totally okay with that. So now I'm going to make the full page shaker right here. I'm using a page protector uh, to go ahead and place around the kind of porthole circle. I make sure that I have adhesive all the way around the circle, and then press that page protector down and make sure that I have really good adhesion. Then I'm going to use some fun foam and I'm going to adhere that down uh, over top of the paper so that the entire layout is going to be popped up on fun foam. Uh, that way the entire uh, layout can be the full shaker pocket. So I take all of my shrink film flowers and place that down and then I grab a Brutus Monroe sequin mix and I go ahead and place that down as well. Now I didn't want my pocket to be super full. Um, if you want a shaker pocket to be much more fuller then you are going to go ahead and add a whole heck of a lot more uh, bits inside there but I didn't want it uh, to be that way. Um, so there is my shaker. And now I'm going to place my bugs kind of around it and figure out where I want my photos to go. So these are photos from the Flower and Garden Festival in Epcot. And I go ahead and mat the photos on some green cardstock. And then I've also got uh, coordinating colors of cardstock that kind of uh, match the flowers on this background paper that I have. And I'm trying to figure out where exactly I want my photos to go, um, how exactly I want my colors uh, to go onto the page. And I'm not, and I'm a little bit struggling here. Like I'm trying to figure out um, how to add something to the page so I don't take away from this fantastic shaker. Um, and I'm just trying to figure that out. So ultimately I decide to mat my other photo on green cardstock as well. I'm gonna pop up my little bugs right here and erase the little pencil line because you know I didn't cut exactly correct when I cut out my circle and now I'm going to build up little bits of color so I have a place for my title and that is going to go down here I'm just cutting strips of cardstock and placing them on top of each other um, and what that is going to do is just kind of give me a place to rest my eyes so this is definitely one of those layouts that are busy even though it doesn't have a whole heck of a lot going on on it. Um, it's busy because of this huge shaker pocket in the center uh, and the background paper is you know full of flowers. So I'm going to place down my title. Now these blue Simple Stories uh, foam stickers I did get from Brutus Monroe and then these tile stickers I pulled out from my stash. So once I get my title down that is going to do it for this layout you guys and the title says i love all the flowers and i truly do love all the flowers at the flower and garden festival so that is going to do it just look at those teeny tiny little shrink film stamped images it just i just love them if you have any questions or comments leave them down below thanks so much for watching and i'll see you again real soon for another video